So what I'm trying to uh, actually tell that uh, in AS, we discussed interrupt handling in processes where each instruction is handled sequentially before the next instruction can start. So oh, nowadays for five stages of instructions A, then five stages for instruction B, then five stages of instruction C and so on. Once the processor detects the existence of an interrupt at the end of the fetch decode execute cycle, the current program would temporarily be stopped depending obviously on the priorities of the interrupt. Pipeline is flushed and then uh, the status of each register is stored. The processor can then be restored to its original status after the interrupt is handled. Okay, so once the processor detects the existence of interrupt, the current program would temporarily be stopped, pipelining will be flushed and the status of each register is stored in the RAM and the processor then restores it back to the pipeline after the interrupt is handled. However, with pipelining there is an added complexity. All right. And that complexity is that as the interrupt is received, there could be a number of instructions is still in the pipeline. All right, let's say when this C is being executed, uh, or let's say when this B is being executed, we have got A in the pipeline or C in the pipeline. Afterwards, C will be executed, sorry. When B is being executed, we have got C in the pipeline. So what will actually happen? There is an added complexity as the interrupt is received. There could be a number of instructions is still in the pipeline. The usual way to deal with this is to discard all instructions in the pipeline by flashing it except for the last instruction. Let the last instruction be executed. C will be executed first. All right. So what happens if four instructions are programmed and the second instruction is interrupted? So the third or fourth system will enter. Because the pipeline will be clean. And then the second instruction will be executed. And the third and fourth instruction will be re-entered in the system. This you need to uh, understand. Achha, kuch aur bhi hai. Kisi, kisi book mein koi aur bhi likhi hui hai. Kuch books mein ye cheezein bhi likhi hui hai ki bajaye iske ke hum flush kare aur dubara enter kare rather we should have uh, every single register separately uh, jo hai instruction fetch ke registers alag honge instruction decode ke अलग होंगे ऑपरेंट फेच के अलग होंगे इंस्ट्रक्शन एग्जीक्यूट के अलग होंगे रिटर्न बैक के अलग होंगे हर रजिस्टर की कॉपी मेमोरी में रख ली जाए और जब हम रीस्टोर करें तो हम पहली इंस्ट्रक्शन को दाखिल ना करें बल्कि हम पूरी पाइपलाइन को रीस्टोर कर लें दिस इज अनदर ऑप्शन सो बेसिकली जो हम बात कर रहे हैं दिस अप्रोच वेयर uh, a check of any interrupt is made following the execution of instruction is applicable to CISC. Complex instruction set computer processor. It would also be applicable to RISC if there were no pipeline. The previous one that we studied. However, no pipelining is almost impossible. This is highly un unlikely. In the pipeline system that we have, uh, that I have just uh, discussed beforehand, there will be five instructions in the pipeline when an interrupt occurs, obviously. One option for handling this interrupt is to erase the pipeline content for the latest four instructions to have re-entered later then the normal interrupt handling routine can be applied to the remaining instructions. The other option is to construct the individual units in the processor with individual registers 
or program counter registers. This option allows current data to be stored for all of the instructions in the pipelining while the interrupt is handled and then the pipelining will be restored. Anyways, 